This is Jane Lowe and I'm here at the DevOps uh, Summit uh, here in Singapore Marina Bay Sands and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Fred Gomez who is the Technology Services Director with GIA Singapore. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, uh, Jane. My pleasure being here. Thank, Thank you. you. And you had a, a keynote presentation earlier about uh, adopting AI and uh, ML for DevOps. Uh, the cycle is very long. But uh, before we go and dive into the highlights of your presentation, just want to get your quick sense, given your extensive experience in uh, IT, right, uh, the technology center, uh, sector. How much do you see the latest iteration of AI, specifically Gen AI? How is that transforming the technology sector in general? Absolutely stunning, actually. The, the, just the, the entry of Gen, Gen AI and the, the absorption of that capability by the masses is actually opening uh, doorways that people did not expect to, to open so quickly. The, the pace at which uh, this is now leap, taking leaps and bounds is, is unforeseen, right? We had transformations in the past in terms of like, you know, when the internet came, uh, where even before that, with different, uh, you know, industry uh, innovations that happened. This one is very, very significant in that the pace of innovation has, is just unbelievably fast. Uh, it is going to shake up a lot of things. Uh, I, I'm I'm a, I'm an optimist. I believe everything that it is it's all going to be for the good. Um, there will be the naysayers that say, "No, you know, you got to be careful with the bad guys." There will be bad guys always, but the good guys always prevail, right? And the good guys are not going to sit quiet. Uh, and it takes the bad guys to make the good guys better, right? So every iteration, as I was speaking earlier, you know, as, as systems get more and more complex these kind of tools and, and capabilities come uh, are made available and they only get better. I mean, we just improve ourselves. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question later about, you know, what uh, it means for uh, professionals, IT professionals, because obviously the job security question is a big concern to everyone. But before we go into that, so diving into your, the highlights of your presentations, uh, AI and specifically uh, Gen AI impact on DevOps. And I think for a lot of people, when they talk about uh, DevOps are uh, one of the areas where they see a very obvious transformation taking place is in the coding cycle or aspect of DevOps, right? Uh, of course, uh, the large language, mo language models can help when it comes to coding and programming. Um, and obviously, as you say, uh, the bad guys are also going to exploit that capability as well. How do you, s but many people would say it's going to increase the productivity massively for programmers. How do you see that uh, happening? Absolutely. It's already doing. I mean, today you can, you know, the other day I was sitting with a, with a developer and he had no idea how to, how to do a, a module uh, and he just opened up Gen AI, uh, plugged in the parameters. Mm -hmm. He got code right out of the system. Uh, Gen AI actually, it was, uh, I'm not sure which tool it was, I don't remember, but he got the full snippet of code, plugged it into his uh, IDE, and voila, he was done, right? Something that would typically have taken probably half a day to research and, and you know, develop and put together. He spun it in, inside 30 minutes. He was able to, to uh, prompt the system accurately, get to a prompt maturity level where he was prompting, he was providing the right prompts. Uh, and then he got the answer that he wanted, and he was able to take that, test it, so and, and validate that. Uh, he had to make some tweaks, you know, and, and modify the, some of the, 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 the schemas and the, the parameters. But he was able to come up with a fully functional, solid, you know, st well-structured code that he can reuse. So it is, it is already making differences. And, and the whole low-code, no-code, I mean, I know that's it's hitting, I mean, the, the, the vendors who are selling these low-code, no-code platforms are, are touting it as, as, as the be-all and end-all. Um, it, it's still... You know, from a, if you want to customize and you want flexibility, it brings a little bit of rigidity into, into that space. So it's not the be-all and end-all for all coding, uh, but it's definitely beginning to eat into that space of, you know, uh, de developer comfort, if you will. Right, and how is it transforming the, f uh, the testing cycle? Earlier you say that uh, 
uh, on a sort of a isolated basis, the programmer is able to sort of quickly test and debug the code. But on a whole scale, it's going to massively transform the testing, uh, the, the amount of time that's spent on developing testing plans, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, you, you can even have the models identify the, the various... Uh, in, in fact, today, if the, one of the problems with manual testing is you have to think through the scenarios, right? But if you turn unleash AI, it will it will look at all possibilities and it'll you know come up with all the, the test case and the test scenarios. So you, what you end up being, getting is a much more thorough and well tested product, right? So yeah, it, it, it touches every single space. It's going to spot all the sort of uh, what they call the corner scenarios, is it? Yes. Uh, better than humans, right? Absolutely. Which wow. we most most likely due to the, the lack of time or just for the sake of you know let's test the 15 situations we know. Uh, but, you know, there are 150,000 situations, right? And now if you take that and you automate the testing part of it, that'll do. You go to sleep, come back in the morning, it tells you what the exceptions are. So, yeah. Right, okay. So coming to exceptions, right? Uh, you also highlighted in your talk about uh, how AI is going to transform the monitoring as well as the predictive aspects. How is Gen AI going to take that further? So again, large language model, m m models can probably help, you know, with building that capability out. We are yet to see, I haven't come across any tools yet, but I'm sure somebody's already thinking about it or putting something in place. The growth, the, the limit, the, the, it's unlimited, right? Where this will, I don't think there is an end here. It's how far do you want to take this? And, and then at some point, it'll, it's like it'll explode into an area that will be, you know, financially rewarding for, and, and that's the industry that will drive most of this, right? I think this is now the storming and forming of, of AI, gen AI culture. And, uh, you know, it's, it, at some point it'll begin to, to stabilize and, and... Become really embedded in... Embedded and, and right. more clear in, right. you know, where the, 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 the big strides can be made. Um, you also highlighted the collaboration aspects, right? So how, you know, AI and obviously gen AI is going to uh, improve and enhance that as well. Can you tell us a bit more? Yeah, so uh, this is, you know, whether it's getting customer feedback or just even collaboration within teams, uh, for, within dev and ops, uh, you, you can use you can the, the capabilities of chat bots and and that capability where the human interface okay, is is so easily uh, baked in now with with Gen AI and the capabilities of large language model models, even the language barriers are broken, you know everything. Yeah. So yes. and and now with you know there's a lot of you know, you, you write an application that's, that you want used across multiple cultures. Uh, you, you have development teams that are spawned in different geographies. All this now, there's no more, you know, you're breaking those barriers down and you're making it a level play, playing field in terms of getting collaborative feedback um, and, you know, and then building on top of that. So what's next, right? What is the next barrier of, 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 of in, on the frontier? That's amazing. It is. Yeah. A, a lot of, I think, uh, for many people, a lot of exciting um, transformations they can look forward to, but also, on the other hand, quite scary as well on a personal level. But before we go into that, I just want to get your feedback very quickly because earlier we talked very briefly about, you know, how organizations can adopt and uh, AI, right? And you, you spoke earlier about prioritizing because we can't do everything. So can you tell us a bit about, you know, for organizations who are keen to adopt the latest iterations of AI, what are, you know, some of the steps they need to think about first? So maturity counts, right? I mean, every organization is at a different level of maturity. Um, there is, there, there has to be a, a, a realization of, uh, I, I sh you should understand where you stand, right? If you are a third grader, you need to learn the basics from the third grade level. If you are a, a seventh grader, then you start, start at the seventh grade level, right? So first is understanding where you are, right? Am I at the third grade level? Am I at the seventh grade level? Or am I at a graduate level, right? Depending on where you assess, when you assess your capability in a, at an organizational level, um, then you start there. And always lean initially at least with augmentation of, of uh, skills, right? You either get external help, uh, there are services that you can, uh, you can you know, enroll. So that's, you know, you, you get that hybrid uh, mentality going. One thing as I, as I was saying on stage is 
you got to do it now because the next generation of folks that you hire into your organization, Jane, is people that will walk in with AI in their, in their belt. Right, yeah. So now you're going to have this divide between you, there's one group that speaks AI, the other group has no clue about AI. So you have to quickly build your maturity because that AI group, the, the ones that are going to college now, they're absorbing this faster. They're writing papers with this and it's accepted. Right? I mean, for a brief period when Gen AI hit the, hit the waves, uh, a lot of universities came out saying, hey, you know, we're not going to allow you to use it. You can't stop this, right? I even see corporations saying, don't use Gen AI that. I mean, they're trying to contain this, right? You cannot contain this, right? This is, this is not containable. So you have to embrace it. You have to embrace it and you have to, you have to see how best to, uh, to direct it. Right for better the use for the better of mankind, so that's where I think we have to spend our time and resources and, and energy, um, and and with that I think that's the start starting ground. Right, get your 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 organization's uh, base, uh, you know, measures to where 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 they are, and then start the augmentation and start building it in. Right, uh, I, I would even go to the extent of saying if if you are uh, an organization, you should start baking. Um, in your annual goals and objectives for employees, for, for your own workers, um, uh, capability to build or enhance their AI and ML smarts, right? It has to be. It's like we used to have, you have to have integrity, you have to have uh, uh, honesty, you have to have, uh, you know... Teamwork. And, teamwork yeah, and right, yeah. all, all that. You have to have AI, ML. You have to. Whether it is in learning how to prompt the, the, the engine or learning how to, 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 to identify tools or just you have to. It is now. Right. And so that comes to my last question, really, um, which is of I think it, you, you sort of answered it right. right? Um, which is a lot of people are worried about. So, for example, people who are probably maybe less accepting of AI. They are worried about job losses and stuff, but what your advice is, embrace it. Yeah, and, and I, I say embrace it because it is such a wide spread of, of area that this touches, um, and the opportunities is not narrow. So if I, I, I will go out and I will, ca I will prove, I can prove, I, I, I can, you know, if you want, I will go, back, go to that level and I'll say, I will be that role. And I'm willing to take that on to challenge anyone who says no, right? Um, at any level, AI ML can be implemented, right? To, to the betterment of what you do. Uh, I can be a janitor. I can be a street sweeper. I can be a CIO. I can be a CEO. At all levels, AI is going to, is going to impact you. Now, it's up to you to learn how you can leverage, leverage it yeah. or you can decide not to do it and then suffer the consequences of it right but it, it's and there is no barrier trust me there is no barrier in leveraging ai at whatever level you are right it's just you you and your mental you and you thinking that i cannot use it it is because you're blocking out the under, blocking out from understanding the opportunities of ai so there is the initial step you need to make, which is embrace the fact that AI is here to stay and you have to get in into the, the pit and learn, be open to learning and understanding. So your final advice to those who are still uh, pushing back on this, you know, very powerful innovation is embrace it and it will uh, transform your life in very positive ways. It will, and not only just your, your, you know, one aspect of your life, it will, it will transform every aspect of your life. And I think we have, as we, we as humans, <laughs> have, the, have the basic responsibility to not give up on this, in, on this innovation that is a game changer for humanity. You can take AI and use it in so many different ways to, to, to feed the, hunger, the hungry, to... to to allow drinking water to people who don't have uh, drinking water, to provide shelter to those don't, who don't have shelter. You can take this and leverage it at any and every aspect of your life and of the ecosystem that we have today uh, to better it uh, and to make it better, right? So I think this is an opportunity. We should all 
step in. Thank you for your uh, very positive message today, uh, Fred, uh, and thank you for your time. I have sort of one last maybe controversial question. Many people have come to me and say, look, you know, AI has been around. Has it, you know, uh, brought the benefits to humanity? And that is the uh, pushback that most people uh, will come to me with uh, when I say, you know, embrace the latest uh, Gen AI. What, what would you say to that? What I would say, my, my stock answer to that would be, AI by itself cannot improve humanity. Humans need to embrace AI if they want to improve humanity, right? AI is a tool, but the tool by itself cannot do anything, and that's what it is. We should keep it where it is, right? It is a tool. It is not as smart, it is not as, smart as humans, right? We have conscience. We can make decisions based on a conscientious situations, but not AI, right? Um, that's where. It's a tool. It's for us to take the tool and leverage it for the, the good of mankind. Right. So on that note, thank you so much, Fred, for your time today. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Jane.